Alright, first race. I wonder how long before the first car crash happened. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Welcome to the little things. Yes, we're gonna be taking another look at Bugbear's next car game, which is now in pre-alpha, released on Steam for those who pre-ordered. I'll also be taking a quick look at the second tech demo released early in December. But for now, let's jump right into the pre-alpha. First impression, this game is awesome. Still. Everything I said before still holds up. It's great fun, runs very well, looks amazing, is fast and destructive, and holds itself pretty true to the Flat Out and Destruction Derby titles. With that being said, let's take a closer first look at Next Car Game. So the pre-alpha gives us two cars to choose from, with a couple modifications to each car we can play around with. I was wondering at first why I was so slow, before I found the 500 horsepower engine. Then things got really fun. We also get our choice of three tracks, a derby bowl, a gravel slash dirt racetrack, and a racetrack on tarmac slash asphalt. What's more, we can select whether to have all 24 cars, 12 cars, or just two cars. I'd love to see later on the option to choose however many cars we want, but you won't hear me complaining about these options at all. Looking at the tracks, they're pretty simple and straightforward in terms of design, but they're still a boatload of fun, especially seeing how most objects are totally destructible. The pillars crumble, the concrete walls break apart, all the signs snap and act like real wood and cardboard, and everything else you can imagine. The only thing missing is destructible trees. You can't kill a tree, and I learned the hard way. Now, some little things we begin to notice in this pre-alpha. The car damage modeling and destruction has been toned down a bit. Running into things in the pre-alpha does not have the same effect as they did in the tech demo. Although if they did, you'd be out of the race before you made it one lap. So this is fine. That being said, I like to point out that the damage indicator for your car does not accurately represent the visual damage on your car at all times. And there are a few bugs with it, where your car will get hit on the left side, but the damage indicator flashes on the right side, etc. There's also a rare bug where your car will get stuck on seemingly invisible terrain or objects, and trying to move will cause non-stop damage on the indicator and quickly wreck your vehicle. I was unable to get a recording of this, however, but this is all pre-alpha content, so I'm sure this issue will be addressed in the future. The game is still amazing fun, and this doesn't really bother or hinder the racing experience at all. Also, Destruction Derby style damage indicator! I was surprised when I saw this, and actually quite happy too. It's about time someone brought this back to racing games. It's a simple and effective tool to represent damage to your vehicle, especially for a fun arcade racing game like this. I even half expected to hear, Wow! On a side note, currently nothing dramatic really happens when one of these triangles goes black. In Destruction Derby, the front triangles represented your engine, the side triangles represented your front wheels, and the rear ones represented your rear tires. Any of these going black meant that you lost that tire or blew up your engine. I would not mind if Bugbear decided to use the same method for next car game. I'm sure this feature is still incomplete and in development, so we'll have to wait and see what Bugbear decides to do. Warning, the following is just my opinion, so don't explode. I want to talk about the handling real quick. I'm not sure if it's just these particular cars, or if there will be better upgrades to improve handling, but I have to work with what we're given in the pre-alpha. As it stands now, the cars are a bit difficult to control. Well, more difficult than you'd expect for an arcade game. Again, this is just my opinion, but I feel I shouldn't have to fight the car so much to drive in the right direction, or be using my brakes so often on every turn, especially wide turns like this, which I cannot make without braking. Even the AI seems to have trouble controlling the car. Right now, the handling feels more simulator-like than it should. As for me, when I play an arcade racing game, I expect to be able to floor the accelerator 90% of the time, only having to slam on the handbrake for quick, sharp turns. And before you ask, yes, I've tried both the keyboard and the controller, with the handicaps on or off. It still doesn't feel 100% right, but again, pre-alpha, so there's a lot more work to be done. And as Bugbear stated, the pre-alpha was a bit rushed to get released on time, and they're planning many tweaks to come. Not that there's anything wrong with the simulator-like handling system, and I really quite enjoyed the game a lot. Although, perhaps it's not the cars, and maybe it's the tracks. The two race tracks we have now are pretty small, which means a lot of turns and twists. These are quite fun, and actually complement the handling system, especially when losing control in a turn and causing an awesome wreck. 
which is all sorts of satisfying in its own way. But personally, I'd love to see more quote-unquote future-style racetracks that take advantage of the arcade feel this game has. Something like the long racetracks from Destruction Derby 2, with crazy unrealistic jumps and roads crisscrossing each other for ultimate crashes. I'm pretty confident Bugbear has something in the works like this, as we see these sort of future crazy tracks in Flat Out 1 and 2. Who can forget the Crash Alley track? The same stretch of road being used to go both ways? This is madness! And it was awesome! The carnage was unparalleled. I doubt I'm the only one who wants to see this track and others like it return in next car game. Time to move on to little things we can see in this pre-alpha of next car game. Some little things may still exist from my previous video of the tech demo, but I won't bother repeating myself. With that, let's look at the first little thing, which I literally just discovered while making this video. For some reason, I thought, hey, what if I can reset the car before the race starts? Because I think of these things. As it turns out, you can, resulting in a hilarious head start for your car, unless you spam the reset key, in which case you'll go backwards. Speaking of breaking the game, let's go off the track. I'm not sure why, but this is one of my favorite things to do in most games, going off the map or desired area. This was something really cool in Flat Out 1, since you could explore the rest of the tracks and roads that weren't being used for that particular race. Personally, I'm not a fan of being automatically reset if I fly off the track area, especially if it's in a game like Grid, where I fly off this giant cliff and the game tells me, nope, I want to see that. I want to see my car get ripped to pieces tumbling down a cliff. So all I can hope for is that this probably unintended feature stays in the game, and that there'll be some giant cliffs to fly off of. Related to this, let's take a look at the track boundaries for a second. I quickly discovered that if you try to cut across the map, it actually works. As you see here, I go from last to first place instantly. However, this is temporary, as when I make it around the track to where I originally went off, the counter resets me back to last place. Currently, there is no indicator of any kind, like in the previous Flat Out games, to let you know you went off the track and where you must return to in order to keep racing. Hopefully, when this is implemented, it follows Flat Out 1, to allow us to still roam and explore the track freely, without being automatically reset, like in Flat Out 2. Now, something that I noticed early on, even in the tech demo, but didn't mention before, is that the parts of your car, doors, hood, etc., don't seem to collide with anything else other than your own car while they're still attached. This is a bit odd, seeing how in the previous Flat Out games, you could rip off your door if it swung open into anything, or other parts of your vehicle for that matter. Hopefully this fun little feature comes back to us in the full game. Related to debris, it looks a bit as if the insane amount of particles and pieces that went flying from every sort of collision in the tech demo has been toned down a bit in this pre-alpha. I'd imagine this was for performance reasons, seeing as there are many more important things needing to be rendered. But I'd suggest for those with more powerful computers, have the option to increase or decrease the amount of particles, because this is so damn satisfying and amazing, and I want more of this. I don't know about you guys, but I love my pieces. The pizza! Moving on now to weightless tires. I've seen this mentioned quite a bit already, so I'll only briefly touch on the fact that the tires alongside the tracks we can crash into feel a bit more like feathers, with no impact on the car whatsoever it seems. Bugbear has already mentioned that they'll be beefing up the tires and will be making changes to many other physics objects as well, with fences being too strong and concrete walls being too sticky. This next little thing can probably be put under the damage indicator not totally working 100% thing that I mentioned earlier, except in this case it doesn't work at all. When crashing into any movable physics object, whether it's the pillars, the fences, concrete walls, or bendable guardrails, the damage indicator takes no damage whatsoever, while your car, visually, will get completely destroyed. Oh, and yes, bendable guardrails! This is one of the cooler little features in my opinion, something which reminds me of Grid, which also had this feature. It's a cool little thing, hardly noticeable at times, but it definitely adds that much more to the sense of carnage and destruction going on. The fact that something as little as this is already implemented in a simple pre-alpha makes me eager to see what else Bugbear has in store for us in the full game. Let's take a look at the dynamic car's running counter. As we see in every race, not just in the derbies, we have a counter up here telling us how many cars are remaining, or alive. This is also pretty reminiscent of the Destruction Derby games, which also had this fun little counter. What's more, in Destruction Derby 2, the counter was fully dynamic, meaning it wouldn't only count down, but it would also count up if any cars got revived. 
Of course, the only way this happened was if a car was stuck on its side or rooftop and was knocked back onto its wheels. Currently in Next Car Game, this is a lacking feature, and I think this would be cool and fun to implement into Next Car Game. Perhaps a hardcore mode or something, where there is no resetting your vehicle, even for the AI cars, which would make them great fun trying to dodge on your next trip around the track at high speed. Sort of related, we see that in the derby, the cars who are totaled have smoke and fire pouring out of their engines. But in the races, this effect does not show when a car gets destroyed. I think it'd be a good idea to show this effect in the races as well, and in fact, this may just be a bug, seeing how this works in Flat Out 2. And speaking of effects, I'm gonna be a little selfish here and ask, can we please have the radiator smoke from Destruction Derby 2? This is such a minor little detail, but it's one of my favorites. I love chasing down other cars, following in their smoke trails, knowing they're close to destruction, which just makes you want to crash and take them out even more. Touching on camera views briefly, we see we have a few more options this time. Cockpit view, hood cam, bumper cam, and of course the standard chase view. The free cam is missing though, and there's no longer a zoom function on any of these camera positions. A fun little thing to do though is if you have an Xbox controller or something similar, you can hold down the rotation view stick while in the cockpit cam, which gives you this sort of immersive feel. Hey, maybe we'll see Oculus Rift support in the future. Another minor thing I noticed is that if the game is paused for a long period of time, it will eventually unpause itself automatically. Don't ask why I pause my games this long, but just saying. Speaking of minor things though, I figured out that if you go behind the walls here in the beginning of the tarmac track, these trucks you find back here are actually real physical cars. They even act like real cars, rolling and bouncing on their tires, plus they give off the same car crash debris when they collide with anything. Who knows what this may be foreshadowing? Race trucks we can race with? Or maybe pedestrian vehicles we can crash into, like in Flat Out 2. Finally, the last little thing. Let's touch on sound design. Currently, right now, everything sounds pretty solid, except the crashing sounds. Bumping, grinding, smashing, crashing, they all seem to have the same sort of sound. This kind of reminds me of the PlayStation version of Destruction Derby 2, where it was the same droning crash noise for every little thing that happened. However, if you look at the PC version of Destruction Derby 2, the sounds are much more diverse and dynamic, with all sorts of metal grinding, Watch it! crumpling, creaking, smashing and crashing sounds. Destruction Derby 2 is probably one of my favorite games to listen to. It just sounds amazing. I'd love to see Next Car Game follow in Destruction Derby's footsteps, the PC version that is, and include a wide variety of awesome smash em up sounds for us to listen to, as sound design is a big part of a game, to get us as immersed as possible into what's happening on the screen. Alright, I've touched on every little thing I could find, except for one major important little thing. The sandbox of the tech demo. Even after playing the pre-alpha, I still come back to this tech demo to play around with this. This has got to be the most fun I've ever had with any type of destruction or car game, and I know I'm not the only one who feels the same way. I've watched the other videos of people playing this tech demo, and they all agree on one thing. More. Of. This. This is just amazing stupid fun, and I for one would absolutely love to see more of this in next car game. Whether it was a bonus track to play around in, or they somehow incorporate this into the game with some fun mini-games, whatever works. This sandbox-like tech demo, this freedom, this unlimited destruction, this is the kind of stuff we're looking for. It's for the same reasons that games like Gary's Mod are so massively popular. We love freedom and control and unlimited possibilities. And of course, I still want the destructive arcade racing and derby game that this game is focusing on being. But I think a lot of us also want this as well. Bugbear did say they wanted to incorporate mod support, which would be a huge advantage and would allow more things like this. And if I'm not mistaken, mod support has already been confirmed. This is a great direction that Bugbear is going, especially considering how mods today and modding communities are what keep older games alive. Unreal and Unreal Tournament, to name the popular ones, along with Quake, Half-Life, and even Descent Free Space, just to name a few. Making this game open to modding will keep this game alive for years to come, not to mention probably bring about many more players. Next car game by Bugbear. It's still fucking awesome!
I'd imagine this was for performance reasons, seeing as there are many more. But I'd suggest for those with more powerful. Com but I'd suggest for those with more powerful. Com but I would suggest for those with more powerful. Com power. Why can't I see that word? Power. The powerful. I've seen this mentioned quite a bit already. So I'll I've seen this mentioned quite a bit already. So I'll. And concrete walls being too sticky. I'm running out of breath. Holy shit. This next little. Uh, this next little thing can probably this next little thing can probably be put under the this next little thing can probably probably blah, blah, blah. this is one of the cooler cool, cool. let's take a look at the dynamic cars running counter thing let's take a look at the dy let's take a look at the di at the, 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 the let's take a look at the di let's take a look at the di Let's take a look at the dynamic party. Let's take a look at the dynamic. <laughs> I can't. I can't say it.